I'm doing some math in my head what he's going to throw. What do you got? I have no idea. <laughs> I wish I knew. Someone thanked for me. Where did P. Alonzo land in the top 10 first basements entering 2020? What is going on guys? My name is Brett. Today in this video, I'm going to rank the top 10 first basements entering 2020 for fantasy baseball. So fantasy baseball, that means only offensive numbers. It could be defensive numbers as well if you're in the points league if it's like minus one for errors. But in this video, we're going to mainly focus on the offensive numbers. So I did two previous videos before this. I did the top 10 pitchers and also the top 10 catchers for fantasy baseball entering 2020. It is in my baseball playlist. And if you're new around here, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's go straight into this baseball video. So starting off the list, Max Muncy, number 10. So last season he played 141 games, hit 35 home runs, 98 RBIs, struck out a lot though, 149, batting average 251, which is eh, okay. OPS plus 133, he was all-star, he was 15th in MVP. So he did this for back-to-back -back seasons. So he can be a first baseman, he could be a second baseman, he could be a third baseman. This is what I like about Max Muncy. So you can put him at first base, second base, or third base. Uh, last season I had him as a second baseman, but he can move him around. He's also playing the Dodgers. The Dodgers lineup got better, Mookie Betts is there. Number 10 is going to be Max Muncy. Play the funky Muncy. So number 9, Josh Bell. Josh Bell last season, he went off the first half, the second half, I don't know what happened to him. He just completely did a 180 on him. So the first half was amazing. The second half was not. So in total, he played 143 games, hit 37 home runs, 116 RBIs, 277 batting average, OPS plus 143, and got his first All-Star game. So Josh Bell... This, this is going to be his 27th season. This is last season. Last season was his first season that he did great. So can he can he repeat those same numbers, or is it going to be a complete 180 again? Is it going to be really great the first half and really bad the second half, or is the entire season going to be consistent? And also keep in fact that Starling Marte is no longer in that lineup. So he has less protection and less people in front of him. So Josh Pell, I put him as number 9 for not for that reason. Because Starling Marte is no longer in that lineup. And the Pittsburgh Pirates lineup is awful. Let's, let's be honest. I still expect Josh Bell to do well. I'm expecting like between the 25 to 30 home run range, probably 70 to 85 RBIs, probably OPS plus 110, 115. He's still going to be a great player. I don't expect him to repeat those same numbers. So number nine, Josh Bell. So number eight, DJ LeMahieu. So DJ played 145 games, hit 26 home runs, 102 RBIs, batted batted 327 with the OPS plus 136, was all-star, he was fourth MVP, should have been much higher than that, and he won Silver Slugger. You don't really classify him as a first baseman, but he does have that eligibility as a first baseman, a second baseman, also a third baseman. So you can put him anywhere in your lineup. So if you draft someone much higher as a first baseman and you only have one slab as a first baseman, you can put DJ as your second baseman. You can put DJ as your third baseman. Do I expect DJ to have those same numbers as last season? Probably not. Probably like 70 to 80 percent of those numbers, and I'll be perfectly happy with that because he had a monster season last season. But he's also be batting first in that lineup, so he's going to be getting a lot of runs scored, and he's going to have a lot of opportunities. Plus, it's also a contract year for him, so hopefully the Yankees do ex extend him, unless he's gonna be he's gonna get paid a lot of money. So for DJ for the average draft position, he's number seventy. So that means he's a seventh round pick. So you have to consider him. Is he worth a seventh round pick? So he can move around in his lineup. Is he gonna replicate those same stats as last season? So number seven, DJ Lemayhu. Number seven, Paul. Goldschmidt. I can't believe I'm actually putting Paul Goldschmidt as number seven. For so long, for like three or four years straight, when I was doing fantasy baseball, he was always in the top 20, sometimes in the top 10 overall. And now, now I'm putting him as number seven 
best first baseman. I can't believe I'm actually saying this. So last season, he played every single game besides one. He played 161 games, 34 home runs, 97 RBIs, 260 batting average, OPS plus 113, and also he was 20th in MVP. So last season was actually a down season for him. I guess the transition from Arizona to St. Louis is got his numbers a little bit lower than usual. Usually you do expect the high batting average, the high OPS, the high hits, the home runs and the RBIs are about the same. Then like Arizona, like nobody like knew about him. When he goes to St. Louis Cardinals, he was the guy. And now this season, Marcelo Zuna is not there. The lineup got weaker and less protection from him. So he might actually produce these numbers rather than his usual numbers, like batting 300, batting 290, not batting 260, getting a little bit more RBIs, more opportunities, RP- OPS plus, but much higher, like around the 140s, 150s, rather than the 113. Remember, 100 is actually league average. And Paul Goldschmidt, it could be a sneaky pick. Paul Goldschmidt's average draft position is actually 66.4. So that's that's like around the 6th, 7th range, 6th, 7th round. Usually he's like the 2nd or 3rd round. So he could be a very sneaky pick or it could be worth a value because he's in the 6th, 7th round. Number six, Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu is probably the most underrated first baseman Ever like the past like not like not ever obviously but the, probably the past like three or four years because he's so consistent. Last season he played 159 games, hit 33 home runs, 123 RBIs, 284 batting average, OPS plus 119. He was All Star. He was 19th in MVP, and his average draft position is actually 80th. So that's eighth round first baseman Jose Abreu. He's so underrated every single season. 30 plus home runs, 100 plus RBIs, above average OPS, and he's there. I guess he plays for the White Sox because like no one else like notices him, especially because the White Sox actually made moves this offseason, so his numbers actually might increase more, which I don't see that's even possible because he's already hit 123 RBIs, 33 home runs, maybe the batting average might go up, or maybe he has more opportunities this year because... Th- the White Sox did pick up Yasmani Grandal. They did pick up Edwin Encacion. So they did pick up more in-depth players. He does have more protection in that lineup based upon the moves that they make this offseason. So Jose Abreu, if he's there, pick him up because he's very underrated. So starting the top five. Number five, Matt Olson. Arguably could be top three. So Matt Olson last season... Played 127 games, hit 36 home runs in 127 games, 91 RBIs, batted 267, OPS plus 137. He was 21st in MVP and he was a gold glove winner. So Matt Olson, 127 games, hit 36 home runs. Last season, he played a full season, 162, hit 29. So if he played another 30 to 40 more games, he could possibly hit 45 to 50 home runs. So Matt Olson, it is a sneaky pick. It is kind of risky, but he can arguably be like top two, top three for his average draft position is number 65. So Matt Olson, he's going to be in the sixth, seventh round. He's arguably a top four, top three first baseman. But right now, I did put him as number five because of that ballpark because it's huge. But Matt Olson does have the power. Expect Matt Olson to have a great season. He could be a sneaky pick, and he can easily hit probably 40, 45 home runs. And we don't know what his ceiling is at. And hopefully this season, he shows us that ceiling. Number four. Anthony Rizzo. So Anthony Rizzo did have his typical season, meaning he played 146 games, hit 27 home runs, 94 RBIs, batted 293, his OPS plus was 137, and he won the gold glove. So Anthony Rizzo's average draft position is number fifth is 58.2, meaning he's gonna be drafted between the fifth and sixth round. So as a first baseman, if you haven't picked up a first baseman yet, and usually this is probably your fifth or sixth round, you're probably considering drafting a first baseman. If Anthony Rizzo's there, you know what to expect. It's gonna be a high batting average about 30 home runs, about 90 to 100 RBIs, and he's going to be playing a lot, especially because the Cubs lineup is still going to be good. Chris Bryant is still going to be there, even if he 
maybe gets traded or not. You got Javi Baez, you got Wilson Contreras. That lineup is still going to be deep, and he's still going to have opportunities to drive in runs. So as if you're playing a category league or a points league, he's going to help you both of those type of leagues. Anthony Rizzo, if he's there, I would pick him up if you haven't picked up the top three yet. Number three, Pete Alonso. So Pete Alonso played every game besides one. He played 161 games, 53 home runs, 120 RBIs, 260 batting average, OPS plus 148. That is really good. He was an all-star. He was seventh in MVP, and he was a rookie of the year, and he won the home run derby. So he did beat Aaron Judge's home run record as a rookie, and I put him as number third. I'm a little cautious about this because his average draft position is number 27, meaning he's to be drafted in the third round. And that's a little steep. Like, to be honest, I mean, if he's going to repeat those same numbers, I mean, go for it. If you trust those numbers, if you trust he's going to be consistent with those type of numbers, I would say go for it. Through the first three rounds, any kind of sport can hurt you or they can save your season. And you put, if you draft Pierre Alonso and he doesn't repeat those same numbers, it could hurt you. What I do expect from Pierre Alonso, probably between like 35 to 45 home runs, probably 90 to 110 RBIs. The bad average, probably 260. OPS plus, probably like 125 to 135. I do expect him to have a very good season. I think he's going to have a little sophomore slump a little bit. He's going to regress a little bit because repeat those numbers, those insane numbers, those MVP line numbers. But I would be cautious. I know some Mets fans will probably draft him probably the second round as soon as he's, as soon as he's available just because of those numbers. But I would be cautious of those. He can repeat those same numbers, but he can also most likely he's going to regress to a little bit more respectable numbers. 53 home runs that's that's kind of hard to repeat i will be cautious with him but he's still a very good player and he's still the third best first baseman right now i was debating back and forth between him and also anthony rizzo but i gave alonzo a little bit more just because of the upside but the rizzo is going to be a little bit more consistent so number three alonzo so number two freddie freeman (laughs) <laughs> Freddie Freeman, so he played 158 games, 38 home runs, 121 RBIs, batting average 295, OPS plus 136, he was an all-star, he was 8th in MVP, he was a silver slugger, and his average draft position is number 16th, meaning he's going to be the, he's going to be drafted between the second round. So, Freddie Friesman is definitely the second best first baseman right now. I drafted him the last season. I picked number 10 and 11, so I drafted Freeman, also Verlander, for my category league that I did win. You don't really expect high averages from, from first base. You do have Anthony Rizzo. You do have Paul Goldschmidt, if he's actually Paul Goldschmidt, of Jose Abreu. But most first basemen, they're going to have a 250 to 270 batting average. A lot of home runs, a lot of RBIs, but Freddie Freeman is very consistent, and that lineup gap is so deep, especially the Braves lineup. I do expect him to repeat those same numbers, probably not as high as 38 and also 121, probably between 30 35, 100 to 115 RBIs, but if he's there, and I would pick Freddie Freeman, especially if you have a category league, a points league. You could probably pick somebody else, but Freddie Freeman for definitely category league for those averages and home runs or RBIs, definitely for a category points league. It could be hit or miss, but very good first baseman. He's number two. And your winner, Cody Bellinger. So Cody Bellinger is technically a first baseman and also a right fielder and also a center fielder, I believe. So he does have three different positions that you can draft him as. So keep that in mind, but Cody Bellinger is your best first baseman available. He is fourth overall as average draft position available between all the positions, including pitchers. So last season, he played 156 games, hit 47 home runs, 115 RBIs, batted 305, OPS plus 169. He was all-star. He won the MVP. He won the gold glove. He won the silver slugger award. And he had a nine war. Nine war. Wow. So like I said, Coley Bellinger is averaging draft pick was number four so ahead of him is Mike Trout 
So ahead of him is Mike Trout, Kristen Yelich, and Mookie Betts. So you got Coley Bellinger. If you're the fourth overall pick, if you don't pick Coley Bellinger, I don't know what to tell you. Because you can put him as a first baseman, you can put him as a right fielder, or a center fielder. He's good for categories, he's great for points, and he brought up his batting average, or which that is definitely the factor of last season. So last season I didn't draft him because it was a it was a category league, and I saw the 260 batting average. I was like, eh, I'll, I'll pass on that, and I picked up uh, Bogarts. And I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? So I, and I instantly regretted it after the draft. But Cody Ballinger, his batting average from 2018 was 260. His batting average in 2017 was 267, and his last season batting average was 305. He made a huge improvement. Do I expect him to repeat those same numbers? Probably like 85 to 90 percent of those numbers. Cody Ballinger is there. I would definitely draft him. That lineup got deeper, especially when Mookie Betts is there. So Cody Ballinger is your number one first baseman overall. Let me know down in the comment section below. Write down your list of the top 10 first basemen and can also compare it to mine. And I want to compare my list to yours. And if you if you do enjoy this type of video, leave a like. Pass along these videos. It really helps me grow. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace guys. Thank you. Bye. What you gonna do? Never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right Yeah, I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right Yeah, I can only say that it feels right Going with the gut, never had a doubt, felt like this is just a must. Put me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. 